Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research, and I'm um, just doing this video, it's Monday morning. Um, so yeah, what I've done is literally in one hour, actually before all that, let's back up here for a sec. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the bottom right hand corner. This video here is an exclusive sneak peek for my Patreon, so you guys are going to get it a day before everybody else. So... This is it. I whipped up a Don Smith generator literally in about an hour using scraps. As you can see, I used paper roll, okay, three inch diameter. I used a towel roll as the L1. Yeah, I'll try pulling it out here. This is the L1 coil. So I'm using 18 gauge wire and I wrapped it around about, uh, about 10, 10, yeah, about 10 uh, turns. And that's connecting, this is my L1 coil basically, and L2 is the large one here. So if I set it inside here about halfway in, I get the best response. So in, pretty much I'm gonna prove to you in this video that size doesn't really matter, okay? This one here will pump out about eight and a half watts because there's a lot of dimensions that I did not do accurately for this. It was basically slap it together and try to see if it worked which it did, but if you remember, recall this coil here, this thing pumps out way, way more power. So it doesn't have to be a big coil to give you a lot of power. This thing will pump out 50 watts, okay? So obviously size doesn't matter in this case. So I'm gonna focus a lot of my builds now on the actual coil design and the spark gap. So I'm gonna be doing an overhaul of the spark gap. I gotta make a really, really good spark gap now because I'm realizing all the benefits of having a good spark gap, especially for these type generators. So yeah, um, so I'll be focusing on coil design and the actual spark gaps. I pretty much know what's going on. There's a lot of parameters of this that are wrong, okay? First of all, I'm using the 18 gauge wire, that's fine, but it should actually be open wire. It should not have a dielectric uh, insulator on it. It should be basically a, a braided copper wire that has no insulation on it because you're gonna have a tube that's gonna provide that space between your L1 and L2. Now. Another critical thing, the L1 coil, the way I made it, see how small the tube is? Okay, this tube should actually be about two and three quarter inch diameter. This is a three inch diameter, two and three quarter inch diameter, because you need the field to be as close as possible to the L1 without touching it. So, very, very important. Now, I did exactly the way Don Smith said. He used a lot more wire. That could be part of the equation. You have to have the turns. On this one here, it's 10 turns, okay, that are going clockwise. And then they're joined in the middle with a second wire going counterclockwise. Exactly the way Don Smith said. Now, the other thing, too, is on the end of that wire, that wire goes to... Uh, goes to ground the middle two wires where the uh, basically this would be l2 l3 they're joined together in the center that will be your negative and on the other side of that you have your positive now i have to experiment more see if i've got them reversed so i might actually do but it's still working the way it is so this might actually be positive and this would be negative or vice versa. I have to toy with it. Like literally I just slap this together, but it does work. So I'm gonna show you that right now. This is an 8.5 watt LED bulb, which I don't like using the LEDs, but because this thing's not really that high power, I have to use it because the halogens and the incandescent light bulbs just don't work because the dimensions of this coil are way off, but it still works. So 
it, it boils down to coming up with a good coil design. This one seems to be a bit of a winner because this is putting out a lot of power. So if I can refine this and improve on this a little bit and give me a lot more output, you know what? I wouldn't need the big coil like this. I would use something like this. Something that's a lot smaller because just because it's a big coil doesn't mean it's going to put out huge output. You know what I mean? It, you have to, because this thing will only pump out about 350 milliamps of current. So if you only got that amount of potential, you're relying on the spark gap and the coil design to accelerate the, the amperage in it. That's why this coil is way more powerful than this guy. It's because just the way the design of the coil, you know, I'm using, this was 26 gauge wire here. And the L2 wire is, uh, I believe, 20 gauge. So the ratio between the 26 and the 20, uh, sorry, the 20 and 26 gauge, that's a big factor. Now, again, am I using too many turns of the 26 gauge? Maybe I have to go a little bit less to get the amperage up. I'm finding the L1 coil. You have to create the strongest possible field you can. So even though that it might be five turns, it's still going to create a very, very strong field. And that's what you want. And also the resistance goes down. The less wire you actually use, the resistance goes down. But to a point, now the way I had this, this one here is probably about 25 or 30 turns of the L2. That's okay, provided that the resistance stays in uh, a respectable range. I would keep it probably, if I were to measure this now, I'm guessing it'd probably be about 30 to 50 ohms resistance. So I'm going to experiment. I'm going to get the meter up. I'm going to take some readings of the actual resistance that I have on the L2 coil and take take that into consideration. So if I can get it down to say like, say it's 50 ohms, I'm going to redesign it and try to get it down to 30 ohms. So that means that the field emitted is going to have a little bit more amperage and a little bit higher voltage. So that's where this coil here, because I got a lot less turns of wire on this coil than I do this one. But why is this guy 10 times more powerful? Well, it's the dimensions. The L2 and L1 are like basically on top of each other. So the field doesn't have to travel far. But you also have to take in consideration too, if they're too close together, there is a chance they could short out. You know, uh, the arc will actually go through the insulation of the L2 and cause a problem there. So even if I were to unwrap this and say wrap, I got this plastic tape wrap one layer of plastic tape around it to create a little bit more of a dielectric that might actually help this coil but anyways irregardless this coil is actually kick ass it actually puts out a lot of power you know i'm putting in 15 watts and this thing could pump out 50 that's pretty freaking good and this thing's light it's just made with a paper too so it, it has to do with the ohms resistance and the ratio between the two wires the l1 and the l2 if you get those right, if you get that within resonant frequency, I think the coil is a real key, key thing in transfer of power. So I'm going to have to really start taking my own meter and start taking resistance tests of the L2 and L1 and see what the ratio is. Maybe i got to tighten it up. Like I said, if it's, say, L L2 is 50 ohms, and I decide, okay, I'm going to uh, get it down to 30 ohms. Okay, well, that means that my potential is going to go up and the field's going to be stronger. So that might actually help on my output. Because, you know, my high voltage generator can only pump out about 350 milliamps. And it's got to go through, jump through two spark gaps before it even hits the coil. So I think that's where, you know, here, I haven't even shown you yet. Okay, let's do that now. So I got the L1 coil here on the tube, and I believe I got it about halfway through. Yeah, it's about halfway. 
you can adjust it. If you go in and out with that tube, the light will actually start to dim. The sweet spot seems to be within the middle. So I'm gonna turn it on here. Let's actually turn the lights off so you can actually see it. And as you can see, it's fully lit. And this is 8.5 watts. It's fully lit. And I'm running it at 6.9, uh, 6.5 volts at 0.34 amps, 340 milliamps. So that's about, I believe, around a watt, watt and a half or something like that, give or take. And it's putting out 8 watts. So the test I did last night, I got the efficiency down to 193, 193%. Now, this coil, the small coil that I did, my COP was 464. So it's more than twice the power coming out of that coil. So you can see uh, here, I'll actually adjust the, uh, when I adjust it, watch, see it goes dim, see? When I slide it in and out. So it seems like the sweet spot's right about there. Now, if the L1 and L2 were closer together, more tight, I probably get a lot more power out of this but also too the l2 coil here on top that should be bare wire it shouldn't be insulated because i got the paper roll there and then i got the l1 underneath it if this wire was exposed the the atmospheric ions whatever the atmospheric power that's coming all around us that'll actually amalgamate to this wire a lot easier so, and also because it's a bigger coil, you need more power input in order to energize this. That's where the smaller coil seems to be working so much better. It's like way more efficient. Pumps out way more wattage. So, in this case, it looks like size does not matter. Smaller coil, you're going to get higher potentials. So... I think uh, this coil can be worked on, but why would I want a big honking ass coil like that when I could have something like this size with four times the power? Like, why would I want to play with something that big? Like, there's so many different coils you can design. The Don Smith coil, this one here, is more of a showpiece than anything. Personally, that's the way I see it. So... Yeah, don't, don't focus on a giant-ass coil. I just wanted to try this to see if it worked. Focus on a coil this size. You're going to get a lot more power, even smaller. If I went to half this size, I bet you my potentials probably go even higher. Right now, this thing's... I The efficiency is telling me about 464%. This one here, 193. So the guy online that I was watching, he was getting 200 watts out of this. Hey, that's cool. That, that works for it. But if I can get 200 watts out of something that big, I would go with a smaller coil any day. Smaller to make a unit. Why wouldn't you want a giant coil like this? This is just kind of for me to see if it actually works. And it does. So anyways, my patrons, you guys got the first peek at this. This will actually go uh, public in one day after. So don't forget, if you haven't become a member, you can do so below. Subscribe in the bottom right corner. I got my Patreon link and my Bitcoin to donate. Become a patron. You'll get to see stuff like this before everybody else. So everybody have a great day and uh, we'll see everybody soon.